have Steve, I've been using Pearl 5 for about 20 years commercially, and the last six months I've been working on Pearl 6. This is one of the small projects that I've done. Uh, the source code for this is available on GitHub, put that link on the bottom. So, what I'm going to talk about is Pearl 6 parameters. Uh, Pearl 6, uh, Jeff is also doing a talk on Pearl 6 parameters, but I think he's sort of doing a very much bottom up approach, whereas what I'm, what I'm going to do is just to show you a very short program that I've written, which is less than 100 lines long, to sort of talk you through each line. So, what it does is it generates C tags. So, what are C tags? C tags, as the name suggests, were originally related to the C programming language. Uh, it's an old Berkeley utility, so there's a picture here of the tower in Berkeley where BSD and VI and a lot of the Unix stuff came from. So, tags, uh, it's a very simple text file, I'll just show you an example of it. So, yeah, tags look like that. So, basically, each line has a package name and a, a, a function or method defined on it. Uh, there's a P and S at the end of the line. The original format has uh, constants and labels C and L, uh, which is specific more probably to C than to Perl. So although it's a C, uh, originally was a C format file, uh, it's now available for a lot of different languages. Uh, and there's a support in a lot of editors. Uh, what I'm going to focus on is the support within Vim. Uh, there, there is an Emacs version called eTags, which I believe is quite similar. I think this could probably be modified to generate eTags. But really, the VI or Vim ones are, are the sort of standard. And it's like Atom, Atom supports it, so modern editors support it as well as the old Unix editors. So, so what these tags enable you to do is, within your editor is to navigate yourself around, a bit like an IDE, but it's more text-based. So, the original, originally, C tags was associated with VI, then there was a version associated with Vim, which is the EX tags there, not to be confused with E tags, which is the Emacs one, which is quite different. Uh, most of the Linux distributions probably still contain that version, but in the last year or so, uh, there's been a, a one that's more actively maintained called Universal C Tags. So if you're seriously interested in C Tags, I, I'd recommend using Universal C Tags. Uh, Universal C Tags does now generate Perl 6 tags. It didn't when I started this program. The last time I looked, I still think that mine supports Perl 6 better. Uh, mine's written in Perl 6, whereas C Tags itself is written in C. It's multi, it's multi language though, so. If you, know, if you wanted to use it with other languages, including Perl 5, I would still recommend universal C tags. There's also been a sort of history, because it's quite easy, the, the file format is quite simple. Uh, it, 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 so the script basically parses source code and then writes out each of the lines that I've shown you. There's been quite a history of, of people writing short programs to do it. And I got the inspiration from doing this from old Tom Christensen uh, P tags, which was his version written in Perl. Perl 5. However, this is very Perl 6 specific, what I'm going to show you. So, yeah, Perl 6. So, what Perl 6 isn't. So, Duke Nukem Forever was a game that was announced back in the 90s uh, and then released very late and was quite a disappointment. And it's been one of the joke things if you look on the forum site like Slashdot. So, that's a picture of Duke Nukem. Rakuto Star actually came out in 2010, so it beat Duke Nukem Forever by one year, 2012, 2011. Is, is it slow? Well, I've got a lightning talk later where I try to show that it's not necessarily slow. It's, in fact, in some instances, it's faster than Perl, Perl 5. Failed replacement for Perl 5? Not really. It's intended as a supplement to the language. And finally, Perl 5 will, sorry, Perl 6 will probably include uh, a parser v5 which will parse Perl 6 anyway. So, so the, two, the two very much work together. Also Stephen Russell's <coughs> talk, he was showing us that the syntax that he's building into Perl 5 closely resembles Perl 6 anyway. What Perl 6 is really? Well, it's a, it's a butterfly kitten multicolored unicorn. <laughs> 
Thanks, I think I pinched that from Wendy, actually, that was a image somehow. What was it really, really? Uh, fun. Uh, there's a Pulse 6 channel on Freeno, which I recommend people join. It's been very friendly, uh, very helpful for people starting off with Pearl 6. Uh, Rakudo Stars intended as an end user uh, distribution that contains a lot of modules uh, ship with ship with it. So that's probably the closest thing to a sort of core library. Uh, they're intended to be multiple versions, multiple distributions with core libraries. But Rakudo Star is a good is a good starting point for a beginner. Or if you're more adventurous, <coughs> you can use Rakudo Brew. Uh, which basically resembles Pearl Brew, uh, so you can have multiple versions, and build it straight from Git, and swap between the versions uh, easily. There's an ecosystem too, which is based on GitHub, uh, and the Panda utility, which can be used to install the, uh, the application I'm going to show you, that resembles CPAN minus, so it can also be built from Rakudo Brew. Okay, so I'll just start off by showing you some Pulse 6 source code. So this is a simple program, it's less than 100 lines long. Uh, it starts off with use v6. So if you read the design documents, it suggests using v6. There are other versions which define a more specific version of Pulse 6. But <coughs> use v6, well, if you accidentally wrong, run the wrong file, so if you run this as Pearl 5, it will error with a useful error. So I, I think it's worth having use v6 for that alone. Also, it gives <coughs> hints quite frequently to text editors to color syntax highlighting. In fact, another plug for another module is that the color syntax highlighting here that I'm using is the Vim color syntax highlighting. And I've, I've written a Perl 6 module which uses Vim uh, to color syntax highlight code examples, which is also on GitHub. So, yeah, there's nothing very surprising on this slide for a Perl 5 programmer. Uh, there's constants are built into the language. Uh, so I, I define two constants. There's a package tag field and a subroutine tag field. As I said, there are other uh, ones within tags, but I haven't bothered with them. So as you can see, there's an embedded tab there because it's a very old format and people back in the day used to think that having tabs in text files was good, which it probably isn't. Okay, so this is a, gra a grammar. So the grammar probably resembles a class, uh, and then you've got tokens within the class which resemble methods. Uh, there's a regular expression at the top which is named full pack, and it's used by the two tokens beneath it. So, so the purpose of this grammar, and it's quite a naive one, is to parse a simple subset of Perl 6. So I, I did this really as a learning thing. So a, a more intelligent way of parsing Perl 6 would be to use the proper Perl 6 grammar itself. And the, the, I intend to produce a version that, that does that. But just to, to show people what Perl 6 grammars can do, I think this is quite a good example. So the, 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 the parsing of the token starts with the top token there. And you can see that it's either a package or subroutines. And then the two tokens, package, packages and subroutines, are defined underneath. And uh, I, I simply included some of the syntax for a package. It's probably not complete. It's probably changed since I've written this. But, uh, for example, the unit one was added relatively recently, probably in the last few months. So, but basically, it, it passes out packages and classes, subroutines and methods. The actual regular expressions themselves resemble Perl 6, so, sorry, resemble Perl 5 regular expressions, but there are some differences. For example, white space isn't significant. So this is like the, you know, the X option that you'd use with standard Perl 5, which is recommended in Perl best practices, and it, it's built in. If you, if you don't want to use Perl 6 regular expressions, you can actually just specify P5 and that will use Perl 5 regular, regular expressions. So the grammar is usually coupled with an action. Uh, the action there is, is defined as a class. Uh, there's an attribute there, has dollar dot file. So that's a twidgel. So Perl, you know, Perl 5 has sigils where you have uh, where you have one character at the start of the variable declaration. This has two. 
So the first one is a scalar. The dot means it's a method. The dot means it's a public method. If I use an exclamation mark, it would, it would be a private method. Next thing you notice in the method is that you can pass that there are sub subroutine signatures, as there are in the most recent version of Perl 5. Uh, if it's not experimental, I think it's. Yeah, it's <coughs> so I can pass. I, I pass the match object in, and because I manipulate the the, the match object, so I have I have to create a copy of it. But by default, whatever you pass into a method or a subroutine, uh, if you try to assign another value to it, it, it will error. So I, I have to have an attribute uh, there, which is, is copy. So another way of doing it would be to use is is read write. So, so the, other, the next line, the full pack line, now that uses a name to capture. So in Perl 5, you use $0, $1 to match. You can name the captures, which is, actually makes life a lot easier. Uh, being Perl 6, it's very object oriented. So what's returned from uh, the, 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 the capture there, the full pack between the angle brackets, is actually an object. So you, you have to call a string method on it to get the object out. Uh, so, yeah, the, the kind of example there of a regular expression, and the, 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 the G modifier is now at the beginning of the regular expression rather than at the end of it because it's too easy to overlook it at the end of a regular expression. It's better to have it up front. But otherwise, yeah, the, 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 the tilde tilde is obviously changed, but otherwise it pretty much resembles a, a full five regular expression. Uh, the take, so the, the, there's a Construction, which is take and gather, uh, you can kind of think of it as being like a return. So for the take, there'll be down further on in the code, there'll be a gather. So the take returns to the gather. There's some other complexity. It basically, it's, la it's lazy. Uh, so, so that line there, you, you can see too that you can specify with the <coughs> So the syntax has changed slightly for specifying the variable, the scale of variables within the string, you put the curly brackets outside uh, the, the dollar sigil, and the, the p tag field on the end is a constant, so it doesn't have a sigil. Yeah, the, so the next method, so the method that I just showed you matched a package. Uh, this matches a subroutine, and it looks fairly similar. Uh, I've not used the named capture, I've used uh, a numerical capture there, and there's quite a big gotcha for Perl 5 programmers. So Perl 5, as probably most people are aware, the first capture is $1 and $2, probably because it's come from Orc or something. Whereas in here, this, because it's a, more of a, a, a fresh start, as you'd expect, uh, the, the first capture is $0. So, so, so you know, the captures are, are, are indexed starting with 0. Uh, yeah, that pretty much resembles. So you know, the take, again, returns essentially that value and builds a list from it, which I'll, I'll show you shortly. Yeah, the, the, so, yeah, this, this module only, sorry, this script only uses one uh, pragma uh, to load a module in, which was file find. And file find pretty much resembles file find rules that you have in Perl 5. So as you'd expect, uh, this finds all the Perl modules under Dot. Uh, one thing that's interesting is the, the way uh, the, the colon dir syntax. So that's the equivalent in part of doing dir fat arrow uh, dot. But th this syntax, I, I quite like this. You get used to this quite rapidly. It's quite a nice syntax. Uh, yeah, the regular expression probably improved that a bit. But. Oh yeah, there's a Unicode character at the end there. So you see the two greater than uh, symbols, that, that essentially does a map. So that's so, so what it does is it gets all, all, all the file names under the dot directory and then converts them to, uh, into objects using dot io because then they can be manipulated as files. Uh, originally I used map, but I've changed that to use the two greater than uh, symbols. So, so the way that, that's a Unicode character, and the way to type that is to control K greater than, greater than. In fact, if I not put the control K in and just use greater than, greater than, that would have worked as well and just been like an ASCII way of doing it. 
So the ASCII way of doing it is to call the Texas operator as that's the Unicode one, which looks quite neat. Okay, so yeah, it just iterates here through through the files which are actually I/O objects. Uh, that's a pointy block. So notice that the dollar I/O doesn't have a line in front of it. It's just in scope between the, the, the curly brackets. Uh, so yeah, I/O lines, as you'd expect, reads in the lines from the file. So that thing about having to split on you know dollar n. It's built up the language where you can just read, you can just iterate through the lines quite easily. And, and, and the chomp, you notice that's a, a that's a method now, and it, the user dots with it. The, the next line append. So when I first wrote this, I was able to use push. This is one of the things that's changed. So essentially, in order to push a list onto a list, you can no longer use push. You have to use append. So, so I, ha I had to change that. And the gather, it, that's where the, the takes return to the gather. And uh, the, the rest of it's really just boilerplate. So I pass the line in, and I link it up to the actions. Uh, the, the syntax here is quite interesting too. So you, that's got colon uh, dollar file. So that actually means file fat arrow dollar file. Which, because that's something that you type quite often, there's a shortcut for it, which is a very nice syntax. It just makes things look great. But, uh, yeah, the other thing you notice too with the append uh, is that I don't have to put brackets around it, I can just put a colon around it. <coughs> and that, so that's essentially that's like brackets around it. Steve? Um, by default, the chops. So Does it? Right, okay. I could delete, 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 I Yeah, the reason is that originally it didn't use lines that I was just splitting, and I only did the lines yesterday. Okay, so that's, yeah, the final slide, again, shows you something that's quite neat. So, I, I've got an array here, and I, I can just create an, a unique array from it and sort it, and there's, you know, there's none other thing. So, you know, in 12.5, I'd either have to do it manually using a hash or I'd have to pull in a third party module to use it. But it's just built into the language, which is quite nice. And then the final line, the spurt, it, 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 it's, it, that's, the equivalent, that's the opposite of slur. So that, that just, you know, dumps basically <coughs> out to a file. So that just writes the tags out. Yeah, and what I'll do now is I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate the actual script. Is that sort of readable? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so what I'm really demonstrating now is uh, the support within Vim. Uh, so I've created a file which is very much, which is just like the file that I've, that I've shown you. In fact, if you look at it too, you can see that there's basically several fields within the file. And the final one is a regular expression which is fed basically to, to Vim to jump to that line so it does a search. So yeah, to get this working fully with Vim, I, I've had to, I'm using some third-party plugins to Vim, and some of which I had to patch to get it to work. But if you go to the GitHub, there's instructions on how to do it. So if I fire up the Vim. So TA, uh, then tab complete, that parses all, all, all the tags in the file, so I, I can just jump to a, a, a random, oops, I'll jump to ecosystem and add project. The one that I've been using really to test this is Panda because it's one of the <coughs> most, most complicated 12.6 modules. It's the one that implements like CPAN minus or CPAN plus equipment. So yeah, if I jump to that, you see it goes straight straight to the method. Uh, and uh, if I go to the top of the file, in any of these, I, I can just jump to these with one keystroke. And back again. Uh, one thing that's quite nice, which is uh, a module which I've installed, is the tags list module. So if I call tags list, it essentially almost gives me like an IDE view of it. So in the left hand side I've got you know lists out all the subroutines and packages. So if yeah, if I if I just go down to one of these, it'll jump to that point. 
there's a, in fact, there's something that I need to fix in this because Perl 6 code tends to use multiple dispatch quite heavily. So you'll have the same subroutine de defined multiple times. And, re uh, and really, I need, I, I need to put that information in so that I can see the signature and the subroutine on the left hand side, but I haven't got around to that yet. Patch is welcome, it's on GitHub. I've got the with screen. Okay, so yeah, conclusions. Well, writing Perl 6 is actually fairly easy for a Perl 5 programmer. Because one of the things about Perl 5 is that the syntax of Perl 5 tends to vary quite a lot anyway. People use different modules, unit moves, and things to change the syntax on the fly. So really, writing Perl 6 isn't any different from writing Perl 5. You just look at it, oh, yeah, okay, there's some got used, but there are really, with learning any new API, it extends Perl 5. In its current state, it's quite usable. I think there are some real advances over Perl 5, but I honestly believe that grammars are much more readable than regular expressions, and I think this will be one of the things that people will use Perl 5 for. Uh, I think Inge has actually backported some of it to Perl 5, but I, I, I've, not, I've not tried that. Yeah, the other things, uh, the concurrency and async support is particularly good, which I need to look at. Uh, also, uh, there's, there's JVM support. I think it's a bit ropey right now, but people are focusing basically on getting more out for Christmas, but it has worked on the JVM and it will work again in the near future very well. Of course, the thing is too that many companies have a policy of JVM languages, so you could just sneak in a recudo.jar at work and you'd be using Perl 6 and they wouldn't even know. <laughs> So also it's fun to write sort of useful short scripts and modules again. It's very much sort of Greenfield's uh, territory. Uh, the ecosystem has around four or five hundred modules in it. So you know, most of the modules that you, you, you like from Perl 5, there's an opportunity to actually read them in Perl 6. Because the language is more expressive, the code will be shorter and it's more enjoyable writing it. So, uh, yeah, exciting times for Perl 6. So, yeah, summer there were three big ticket items. Uh, Unicode support has been improved. So the great list refactor, native shaped arrays. The first beta out, was out in October. There was another beta out uh, this month. And there should, sorry, last month in November. And there should, should be a release this month. Uh, there's a RSS feed site there, pl6 and net.org. Uh, that currently uses Dave Cross's uh, RSS feed reader, which is written in Perl 5, but I'm intending to port it to Perl 6, and I've done some work on that. As I said again, as I said before, join the Freenode channel, which is very handy, <coughs> uh, and uh, you help us and, and or donate. And yeah, that's it. Has anyone got any questions? What sort of web frameworks or ORMs are available in Perl 6 now? Uh, as far as I know, there's not an ORM yet. Uh, there's a thing called DBI-ish, which is, uh, resembles DBI. So I think probably someone writing an ORM is something that's going to happen very soon. There are web frameworks. There's one which is a dancer clone, which seems quite heavily used. I think perl 6 mazencom uses it, a Palidor. That actually comes in task star, so it's shipped as, <coughs> shipped as part of Rakudo star, but it, as far as I know, no ORMs. Talking about Pilot or Pilot or? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Look, there is PSGI, so. And for the people who would like to try it out, um, Perl 6 has a fairly interesting module, it's called inline Perl 5. <coughs> that you can basically use any Perl 5 code inside Perl 6. So if there are some Perl 5 modules you'd like to use, you can try it out with inline Perl 5. Try the module, see if it works. Yeah, By so the way, it's also inline Perl 6 in Perl 5 though. <laughs> you put inline Perl 6 in Perl 5, it works. And there is also inline Python for both Perl 5 and Perl 6. You can use all Python code in Perl 5 and or Perl 6. Okay. And there's native code, so you can use C code as well. So you can switch all about different programming languages.